Let's look more closely now at the joint efforts by the President and Congress to avoid a major railroad strike. As we reported, the U.S. House of Representatives today passed key votes to avoid a strike that could start next week. Lisa Desjardins has our report and then looks at some of the key issues in the dispute. The gentleman is recognized. Today in Congress, both parties fervently engaged in trying to avert a national economic blow, a rail strike in just over a week. Every major industry from automobiles to agriculture to energy will be severely impacted if we fail to act. It's come to us, as much as we might not like it, to have to negotiate this. The House For took the first step today. The yeas are 290, the nays are 137. Passing a bill to force a tentative labor deal into place. Back in September, skies looked clear as the Biden administration helped broker that deal with union chiefs. That agreement would raise salaries by 24 percent over five years and give thousands of dollars in retroactive bonuses to rail workers. But it only grants them a single day of paid sick leave. And that issue was pivotal to rank and file members. As a result, four unions, including some of the largest, voted down the plan and are threatening to strike. A sense of impending crisis was one reason Mr. Biden called congressional leaders to the White House yesterday to get Congress to step in and force the deal. There's a lot to do, including uh, resolving the train strike and the train, uh, the, uh, what we're doing now. And, uh, and Congress, I think, has to act to prevent it. It's not an easy call, but I think we have to do it. The economy's at risk. But progressive Democrats, led by Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal in the House, spent the last day pushing for a better deal. CEOs have increased their pay, and yet they don't want to pay a penny, what amounts to about a penny a day for seven sick days for workers. So I'm not happy about that. As a result, Congress is working on two tracks with two bills. One, forcing the original deal into place, and a second that would force railway companies to pay for seven days of leave. The A's are 221 and the nays are 207. The House passed that Without idea as well, but the Senate can take it or leave it and still uh, avert a strike. Rail owners have pushed back with the Association of American Railroads writing that there is a misperception that they have imposed draconian abusive work rules, saying these are long held practices that unions agreed to in the past. Nearly all agree a strike could derail the U.S. economy, freezing almost 30 percent of U.S. cargo shipments and costing some $2 billion a day. Action in the Senate is expected soon. For the record, we should note that one of the rail carriers involved in this dispute is BNSF, a NewsHour funder. For more on the railroad workers' perspective, we turn to Tony Cardwell. He is the president of the Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way Employees Division. Tony. Help us first understand what it is your workers do and why sick leave has been such an issue for them. Yeah, absolutely, Lisa. Thanks for having me on, first of all. And, and um, I represent the hardest working uh, employees in, in the railroad, I believe. Um, they're the ones that do the maintenance on the track and reconstruction of track, tunnels, bridges. And uh, they still do the hard hard work of swinging a hammer and they operate some of the heavy heavy equipment and uh, do much of the uh, work that uh, maintains the structures and the, and the track structures throughout the United States. So why is it that sick leave is such an issue that your workers are willing to strike over it and maybe freeze part of the U.S. economy potentially? Sure. This was, uh, the sick leave issue was brought to light during the pandemic. Uh, many of our employees uh, fell ill to the uh, COVID virus and, uh, and or were quarantined because they were exposed to it. And so um, in doing so, they were not compensated. And so our, our members lost thousands of dollars of pay uh, through the multiple quarantines and sickness throughout a year and uh, brought the sick leave issue to light. Um, it's been exasperated by the railroads operation uh, system that they utilize called PSR. And PSR has cut our membership to the bare bones. So there's fewer workers doing the same amount of work. And in doing so, um, it, it, it has forced, the policies have forced the employees to be at work. They can no longer call in sick. They can be disciplined if they do so. PSR stands for precision scheduling, which gets to what you're talking about. It's the way the railroads have said they're becoming more efficient, but essentially it's fewer people working longer, longer trains, faster trains. 
that kind of thing. But but I want to kind of get back to what's going on with the sick leave, which is a criti the critical issue here, it seems like. Railway workers aren't unique in having a pool of time off, of vacation time, for example. And some of the railway owners, including the American Association of Railways, argue that railway workers can use that time off that they already have if they are sick. They say that unions agreed to that in the past. What's wrong with that? Yeah, the railroads have, have said a lot of things this round of bargaining, and, and they're just simply untrue. Uh, vacation has to be scheduled. An employee is required to schedule vacation early in the year. He only has one week of vacation to break up uh, in many cases uh, throughout, and he's supposed to give adequate notice to break even if he breaks up those days of vacation. The railroad carriers are just not being honest. This is a look at a major debate, of course, in American life right now, uh, you know, labor and sort of workers' rights and especially time off. But it's also a look at the role of Congress. Congress is poised to act, to force you into a deal. It may have only one day of sick leave. It may have seven days of sick leave. What do you think about Congress acting and forcing you into something now? So we've been adamant. We don't want to strike. Uh, nobody does. But if Congress is going to intervene and stop our strike, um, we believe they should give us what we would otherwise get in that strike. So but the point is this, if, if Congress didn't intervene at $2 billion a day, the railroad would come running to the table to negotiate sick leave, but they're utilizing Congress as a backstop because they know under the law that they can intervene and stop our strike. So our point in, in our position with all congressional people has been, if you're going to stop our strike, give us what we would otherwise get if we did strike. And so if, you, if you're going to intervene and stop us, then, then you should give us what we would otherwise get. And, and that's why the bills that are being passed today, we're happy to see that it passed the Congress. And we're hoping that we can get the Senate to support the bill as well, um, because we have a belief that, you know, our employees are entitled to this. And, and you know, we, we, we need to make sure that um, we stand with workers. Um, our public servants should stand with the workers and not the duopoly corporations that are controlling uh, controlling our government right now. So uh, we have high hopes that we're going to get some Republicans to stand with us and get the bill through the Senate. I can see in here you're busy at work with negotiations with your, your phones, everything going off where you are. One more question in a brief minute or so that we have left. President Biden calls himself a pro-labor president, but he says your strike was just too risky for hundreds of thousands of workers, millions of people, and the economy. How do you respond to him on that? Yeah, we were definitely frustrating with uh, frustrated with what he said. Um, his statement was uh, implied that you know that the, the railroad unions are the problem, and that the and kind of gave cover for the railroads. In my opinion, uh, we wish that he would have made a different statement and uh, come out in support of our sick leave. But he has positioned himself, I believe, to support the sick leave days. And, and I've, his recent statement, he did say that he hopes that the bill uh, passes the Senate. So. Um, I, he's changed his position on this, and, and I, we appreciate that. We were, we're, we're still frustrated that he took the position that he did. Um, but, you know, that we can't always agree. So mm. say that. Tony Cardwell, we know the clock is ticking, and we do appreciate your time. Thank you for your time, Lisa. I appreciate it.